Hey guys, it's Phil here from TechSmart, and today we're going to be taking a look at 50 plus tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy S5. So before we jump into this video, if you want to go look at a couple tips and trick videos that we did on the HTC M8, be sure to check the description below or the annotation on screen. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So we're going to start off with one-handed mode. So basically, if you go right into your settings, from here we can go down to one handed operation and just make sure that's checked on and what it is you can swipe from the left to the right and you enter this one handed operation mode so as you can see everything's much smaller yet the phone is still fully functional you can adjust the size right here by just dragging that up and down really really simple and it really does make the phone able to use in one hand especially if your hands may not be that large you have a couple options along the left hand side for recent applications which you can switch to your contacts or along the bottom you have your multitasking home back volume up and volume down in case you didn't really want to touch the volume rockers on the left hand side. Next thing we're going to look at is adapt display. So let me just quickly hop out of this. If we go into the settings and then we go down to display settings and then we go to screen mode. Right now it's enabled on adapt display. Basically what's happening is you have these couple different color options and it's really going to adjust the contrast and the saturation to really match whatever you're doing. So as you can see on adapt display it automatically optimizes the color range for whatever you're doing. It's really nice and it definitely just makes this phone very 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 gorgeous. Um, I would just keep that on at all times. Next up, we have car mode. So if I hop in to the quick pull down, we can click on car mode right here. And this is going to enable a very simple streamlined interface that's very accessible for when you're in the car so that your eyes remain on the road and not on your phone. So you have this quick prompt right here to go ahead and open up voice search. You can also jump into the phone, messaging, navigation, as well as your music. Just again, very, very simple. We can hit the menu button right here and exit out if we would like. Next up we have Download Booster and this isn't actually a feature I can show you on this specific device because it's only out on T-Mobile in the US right now. This device is for AT&T. Basically if you go into your settings you'll have an option called Download Booster. When you enable that it basically downloads large files over Wi-Fi and 4G at the same time really just allowing you to maximize your download speed. Next we have Apps to SD. And this was really just introduced with Android itself, but a lot of people still don't really know about it. So if you're running out of storage on your phone, go down into the Applications menu. And with an SD card installed, you can tap on an application and click on Move to SD Card. I don't have an SD in right now, so this feature is not going to work. However, when you have an SD in, it does work perfectly. Next up, we have Kid Mode. So this was featured just with the Galaxy S5. And let me go ahead and pull it up right over here. You do have to download it from the Samsung Marketplace. But if we click on Kid Mode, you now have this very, very kid-friendly interface. So if you wanted to hand your phone off to a kid or a relative, basically you're not going to have to worry about them downloading applications that you don't want or taking or going through your photos or anything like that. It just really locks them out of the entire phone and gives them their own kid-friendly interface. So if we look around in here, we have a gallery. And we have these different little things to look at. Uh, we have a camera, which is actually going to be kid-friendly. As you see, the entire interface has been optimized um, and definitely simplified a lot. We go back home, and as you notice, the home button is still bringing us back into this kid mode. If we want to exit it, right here you see this little door. And it's going to ask you to prompt to log into a code. You set this code up when you set up kid mode for the first time. I just did one, two, three, four. And there we have it. We're all out. So next up, we have the ability to import S notes. So if I go into all my applications and open up S note, we now have, if we go into settings, we can import S notes from different accounts. So as you see under here for sync accounts, you can go ahead and Go to Samsung account, Evernote, and you can actually now do Google Drive as well. So meaning, if you've had S-Note on a previous Galaxy device, you don't have to start fresh. You can really just bring everything over because it's sunk through Samsung's cloud. It's very convenient and definitely makes life a little bit easier if you use S-Note. Next up, if you go into the settings, you have an option called Daydream. So this is going to be found under the display settings. We have Daydream right here. Basically, what this is going to do is going to create something like a 
live wallpaper when your phone is charging. So right now we have it on colors and I'll just preview that. So when your phone's plugged into the wall or sitting on your desk charging, you're going to display this little screensaver. There's actually more you can download from the Play Store or you can use ones from Flipboard, Google Photos, Photo Frame, Photo Table. But regardless, it's really nice and definitely makes your phone a little bit more than just a paperweight when it's laying on your desk charging. Next up is audio zoom. So when you're in the camera and you're recording a video, basically what that means is the phone is going to try to amplify the microphone volume when you're zooming in on a video. Meaning, if your subject is walking far away, it'll go ahead and try to increase the mic sensitivity so that it can still pick the, the audio as clear as possible. Next up, you have the ability to sign text shortcuts to number keys. So if we go into our settings, and we go down to language and input. Once we're in here, we can click on this little wrench icon next to the Samsung keyboard. And we have my shortcuts. So tapping on that, you see I've already set up two. One is hello, two is how are you, and we'll add a third one. Ah, welcome, which of course I cannot type. We have welcome set up right there. So if we go ahead and back out, we can open up the keyboard and in here you see if we press and hold on the one, it says hello, press and hold on two, how are you, and press and hold on three, it says welcome. So that's really helpful, especially if you're wanting to quickly add a shortcut uh, for something that you may happen to say a lot. So next up, we have the ability to press and hold the multitasking button to act as your menu key. So if you know the Galaxy S5 foregone uh, with the menu button, and now it has this multitasking key right here. However, if you press and hold, it acts as a menu button. Uh, most applications now are updated to not support a menu button, so it actually has those three little uh, vertical dots. However, if you press and hold, it does work as a menu button in any application that will support it. So just kind of helpful for those of you that are using an older application or kind of just miss the menu button. Next up, we have another option found within the camera. This is going to be slow motion video. So similar to the iPhone, you can actually record in a higher frame rate. And we'll click on recording mode right here. And once we're in here, we have this option for slow motion. And we can record all the way down to 1 8th the original frame length. Uh, really, this just allows for super smooth slow motion video. And it's just really fun, especially if you're wanting to get creative with some of your shots. So next up, we have the ability to disable My Magazine. I have this turned off right now, but let me just show you how to enable and disable it. Pinch your fingers together on the home screen, click on Home Screen Settings, and you have My Magazine right here. You can enable and disable. So when it's enabled, your leftmost screen is My Magazine. And when it's disabled, it's not there anymore. And I just have my home screens. I personally didn't really use the feature, so it's really just helpful when it's not there. So next up, we have Adapt Sound. So if you go into the settings, go down to Sound, and then within Sound, you can go to Call, and then you can go to, should be Personalized Call Sound and Adapt Sound. Basically, what this is, it's a calibration software for headphones. So if you're using a new pair of headphones with your phone, plug them in, hit Start, obviously none are detected, and it's going to walk you through a series of test sounds so it can really calibrate your headphones to get the best possible quality out of them. It's a really great feature. It's definitely one of those hidden gems found on the Galaxy S5. So next up, we have the ability to press and hold in the browser for a couple more options. So I'll open up the internet browser real quick. And any text that you see, if you go ahead and highlight it, so right here the word fruit, you see all these extra options that are going to come up. Aside having copy and paste, you can go to dictionary, find on the web page, or do a web search. So we'll go ahead and do a web search for the word fruit. And then there you have it. A couple more words <laughs> pertaining to the word fruit. Pretty simple, but it's definitely efficient if you're wanting to quickly find a definition or search more for that word that you're looking at. Next, you have Geo News. So if you go into your settings and go into safety assistance, you have Geo News right here. What this is going to do is actually going to send you weather alerts depending on your area. So right here it says receive notifications about extreme weather conditions that may affect you. Just helpful if you live in just say California and you have a lot of earthquakes or Florida, you have hurricanes. Just really just helps to notify you if there's any sort of uh, impending weather emergency coming up. If we go into the settings, you have an option for increased touch sensitivity. 
So we'll go back to display. And right on the bottom, you have increased touch sensitivity. What this is going to do is going to actually allow you to wear a pair of gloves and use your phone at the same time. You don't need any special gloves, just any basic pair will do. But the point is, it really just increases the sensitivity on the screen, allowing your finger to actually be slightly above the screen when it's working. It's very interesting how Samsung's been able to do this, but it definitely works pretty well. So women with long nails or people wearing gloves, you can now use your phone pretty freely. Next, uh, it's actually underneath the battery door. That's just the ability to have a 128 gigabyte SD card. Now, most phones allow you to have a micro SD, but this phone actually now allows you to go all the way up to 128 gigabytes. That's really a lot. Most phones cap out at 64 and even 32 for some, but the ability to go all the way up to 128 almost means like infinite storage for your device. Just kind of, kind of crazy. Next up, we're going to look at My Magazine. I showed you how to disable it, but let's talk about what it actually is. So if you go to My Magazine, swipe all the way leftmost on your screens, it's basically like a flipboard. So it aggregates a couple different news sources, uh, all ones that you actually choose, and then you can go ahead and read through them very easily. If you go into the settings, you can actually adjust who you have news coming in from, and you can go even into your social network. So Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Google+, all of that, you can have them show up on that feed. So if we click on Science and Technology, we'll go home and take a look at the Science and Technology feed. As you see, it is powered by Flipboard, and it's just a pretty easy way to view your news. Personally, I think it's a bit annoying, but for some of you guys, you may enjoy it. Okay, so next up is the IP67 certification. So the Samsung Galaxy S5 is actually fully dustproof and waterproof for 30 minutes in one meter of water. Now, we actually did a whole ton of water tests with the S5, so if you want to go check them out, you can check the annotation on screen, or again, check the link in the description below, or just head over to the channel, youtube.com slash tech. We actually put it in a washer machine, and it uh, fared pretty well, actually. So next up, we have the ability to quick launch the camera. So from the lock screen, you see this little camera icon right here. If you go ahead and just swipe up, you see that it quickly jumps you right into the camera. Now what's good about this is if you do have a lock on your phone, you can still get to the camera, but it doesn't actually show off your gallery. So your photos will still be protected. It's really nice and a pretty helpful feature, especially if you want to quickly snap a picture. So next up, we have the ability to disable S Voice using the home key. Uh, before going over that though, I do just want to show you that if you double press the home key, we'll enable it real quick. You go to S Voice all the way in your settings and open via home key. It should be enabled by default for you guys, but if you double press the home key, you'll notice that S Voice is going to pop up. Now, basically, this is just a very quick, easy way to jump into S Voice so you can ask for the time or the weather or whatever you'd like to do with that. It's just really easy. Anywhere from the OS, double tap the home button and it does so. Now, the downfall to this is if we go over a couple screens and we hit the home button, you see there's a delay. So if we open up the browser and we click the home button, there's a delay. There's a delay. It's really annoying. I personally don't like it. I don't even use S Voice, so why have the delay if I don't need it? So go into your settings, go all the way down to S Voice, and just uncheck right here, open via home key. Once that's turned off, tap the home button and you go home almost instantly. You go home as fast as you should be able to go home. The reason this is happening is when you have S Voice enabled via the home key, once you press the home button once, it's waiting a little bit for that second press. So it doesn't close out of your application and then open S Voice. So now that it's not waiting for that second press, it knows that when you tap the home key, it automatically wants to go back home. Again, this is very helpful. It'll definitely make your phone feel a lot quicker and a lot snappier. So next up, if you have this widget right here, this Google search widget, Instead of actually having to tap on this microphone, you can just say, OK, Google, and it's going to go ahead and quickly prompt you into Google now. So, OK, Google, what time is it? The time is 5.24 p.m. OK, Google, what's the weather like outside? It's 48 degrees and clear in Asbury Park. So as you can see, this is very helpful. Just allows you to get a little bit quicker into the Google Now interface so you don't have to press any buttons or really wait for anything. You just kind of say, OK, Google, and you go ahead and say whatever you need to. 
So next up is the pop-up video player. Now this is only accessible right now with local media, meaning YouTube, stuff like that's not really gonna work. Uh, so if we go ahead and go to gallery and we can tap on a video, I have this video right here. Once I hit play, it's gonna be a kind of quick action. So let's go ahead and try this out. Let me turn the volume down real quick. So I'll hit play. And that icon right there throws it into pop-up video mode. So now you see we have this video playing right here. We can resize it and it just closed out because the video ended. So let me show you guys it one more time. So this icon right here, we'll go ahead and put it to pop-up video mode. You can resize it around and go about doing whatever you're doing while watching this video. It's really, really awesome and definitely very functional if you're watching like a tutorial or a movie and you want to multitask at the same time on your phone. Next up, you may know this, but the home button is actually a fingerprint scanner. And what's really great about that, besides the fact that you have added security for getting into your phone, is that Samsung has actually allowed applications to take control of this. So it was on the iPhone where you can only unlock your phone and uh, make iTunes purchases. You can log into PayPal as well as other applications that are going to be supported in the future. They actually have an open API available so any developer can enable this feature within their application. Really that just means it's going to be very simple to use and really help all of your applications to be very thoroughly protected. So next up we have smart rotation. Basically what this means is if you're looking at your screen, uh, the, it's going to use the front face of the camera to actually look at your eyes at the same time. So if you lay down on your side, the screen won't actually rotate. Now, of course, you can always just go ahead and lock the screen orientation, but this just does it without you having to actually do anything. It just kind of knows you're looking at the screen, so it knows not to rotate it. We also have the ability to jump into the S Finder very quickly. Pull down the notification, and you see right here we have S Finder. Basically, this is a ultimate universal search tool. So I searched hello here, and this is going to go ahead and search everything. So it searched messages, files, S Planner, as well as you can jump right into a Google search. So we'll try something else. We'll say tech, hit search. And it went ahead and found contacts, stuff in Google Drive, stuff in my files, stuff in the web. Literally crazy every single little anything you can imagine searching for. It'll find it in here. In addition, we have Quick Connect, so that's sitting right next to it. So if we go ahead and jump, pull down the notification bar again, you see Quick Connect on the right-hand side. Once you tap that, it'll enable Bluetooth for you, and it's just a quick, easy way to hop into the Quick Connect, which allows you to share files between different Galaxy devices. Again, right here you see it's pairing up to something Bluetooth nearby. I'm not really sure, but it's going to go ahead and link up with whatever that is. I have a thousand and one Bluetooth devices lying around my room, so as you see right there, unable to communicate. Anyways, just very easy right here, quick connect. You can just jump in and quickly pair up with another device. Also, we have emergency mode. So this is new with the S5. If we go into our settings and go down to safety assistance, you have emergency mode, and we'll go ahead and power that on for you guys. Now, what this mode's gonna do, it's very similar to another mode I'm gonna show you later on in this video. Basically, it goes ahead and makes the phone into grayscale so you don't have any more colors on the screen. And because this is an AMOLED display, it actually allows you to conserve a lot of battery life. So we're just going to let it do its thing and enable this mode. So now that we're in here, right here gives you a little uh, idea of how much battery life you have left, as well as you have a couple of these options. So we have flashlight, which if we get that enabled... You'll see that the flashlight gets turned on, emergency alarm, and that can be very annoying. Phone, share my location with some preset contacts, emergency call, and then we have this plus here if you want to have chat on or your Google Maps as well. So basically this really just hunkers down the battery life and allows it to last a very, very long time. So if you're in kind of a tight situation where it's really more so an emergency, you can enable this and try to get out safely. So let me go ahead and disable this while it's turning off. We also have the USB 3.0 port on the bottom. Now most of you guys do know there's the flap covering this which is kind of annoying but as you see the charging port is a little bit different on this model. 
So it looks a little bit larger, and that's because it is. There's actually an additional piece to it. But what you did know was this can actually work with USB 2.0 as well. So your old chargers all still work. Basically, once you cover that piece up there, it's a normal charger like you're used to, and it still works perfectly fine with any older Android charger. So just something to keep note of so you don't have to go out and buy all new stuff. It does work backwards compatible with your old chargers. It's just not going to give you that rapid charging or the rapid data transfer that you get with USB 3.0. Okay, so the next tip we're going to look at is actually within text messaging. So we'll open up messages and we'll send this message to myself and just wait for the second one to come in. Basically, what you can do is you can actually make the conversations larger or smaller simply by pressing the volume rocker. So if I just hit the up key, you can see everything getting bigger and then it's huge. Down key makes everything smaller. So just really very convenient if you're just somebody that necessarily doesn't have the best eyes or you just want to quickly make the conversation a little bit bigger because you can't really see. You can do so and very easy on the fly. You don't have to really dig into any settings. Just use the volume rocker up and down and that'll go ahead and adjust the screen size. You see there's the second one. And yeah, we can make that huge or tiny. And it's very simple. Again, just a press of the volume rockers. Okay, so the next feature we're going to look at is Smart Stay. So hop right into your settings, go to Display, and just make sure that Smart Stay is checked. So what Smart Stay is going to allow you to do is when you're looking at your screen, watching a video, it's actually going to make sure that the display does not turn off. So just say I'm sitting here reading an article or watching a movie, and the display dims or the screen shuts off because it doesn't really know, it thinks that it's inactive. Once you have Smart Stay enabled, it'll again use the front-facing camera, look at your eyes, and it can actually tell if there's somebody watching the screen. And because of that, it'll keep it on. It's one of those really small kind of behind-the-scenes features, but it makes your phone a lot more convenient, and it really just almost makes it really a lot smarter. It kind of knows what you're doing and not really you kind of telling it what to do, if that makes any sense. So the next feature we're going to go over is Air Gesture. So if we go into the settings, we go all the way down to Motion Gestures, and we have Air Browse right here. And once that's enabled, we can go ahead and jump into something like the browser. And with the browser, we can actually go ahead and scroll just by waving our hand over the display. So we'll go down. I'll try to get this a little bit better. And then if you go horizontally through the tabs, then we can go up and down again. It's a bit gimmicky. It doesn't always work the best, but if you're reading through a recipe online or something and your hands are dirty, it's definitely helpful. Okay, so next up we have detailed scrubbing. Um, sounds very weird, but if we go ahead and open up the gallery again, and we'll open up a video. Basically, instead of, I'll give you a quick scenario. If you're watching a movie and you want to scroll to a specific time in the movie, it's very easy to jump ahead way too quickly. So if the movie's two hours long and you're trying to go second by second, it doesn't always work. So if you hit play, and then you can grab the scrub bar right here. And as you see, this is just going at a pretty quick pace. However, if you move your finger up, you see it says scrubbing at half speed, quarter speed, and then we can scrub very, 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 very slow. So you get very fine-tuned scrubbing. Get hold of that, and we'll go half speed. And we'll just scrub around there. So it just makes it very easy, especially if you're trying to get to a fine-tuned area within a video. You don't really have to worry about jumping ahead too far. Next we have Air View, and this is very similar to the Air Gesture. Uh, if we go into the Motion Gestures, actually Air View right here, and just have this enabled, basically what it's going to do is there's a bunch of little sensors underneath the display that are actually recognizing when your finger is hovering over slightly. So we'll open up the gallery to demonstrate this, but it does work in a lot of different areas. We'll go back two steps. So as you see right here, I'll hover my finger over, one of the galleries, and you'll actually see the gallery open up. I'll do this with the camera. So to show you what I'm doing, I'm not actually touching the display. My finger is right above it, and you see it working. 
It's really, really interesting. It also has some features. If you're in a contact, you can get a little bit more contact information. You can see it in the calendar as well to get some more calendar details. And it's really a nice little feature. You also have the ability to swipe twice on the top of the screen to reveal the notification bar. Now this works best if you're in somewhere like the camera or a video when the notification bar has disappeared. Instead of having to actually close out, just swipe twice and the notification bar will pull down. It's very simple to do and it's definitely very helpful and it can make your time go a little bit quicker so you don't have to close out of an application and then pull the notification bar down. You can always just swipe twice from the top of the screen and it'll go ahead and pull down. So next up is Toolbox, and basically this is a list of frequent contacts or applications. So if you pull down the notification bar with two fingers, and you just tap on Toolbox, you see this little three dots pop up, and these are kind of going to hover all around your screen, and wherever you leave it, you leave it. Uh, let me go ahead and move it a little bit to a better area. So now when I tap on this, you see five content or five applications rather pop down. So we'll jump into the camera. And of course, it doesn't show up in the camera. There's one area I didn't want to go. Uh, we'll open up the browser. And then we can jump into the calculator. And then we can go to Memo. And let's actually show you some of the options for this. So if we go down to Edit, we have the Toolbox settings. So these are the different applications that it's going to show. So if we disable some of these and hit Save, see now it's just these three applications. So it's definitely very helpful, especially if you have some favorite applications you like to use. And then you can just remove it by dragging it up to the upper right-hand corner of the screen. So next up, you can actually answer your phone just by taking your phone and holding it up to your ear. So to do this, go into your settings and go into motion and gestures again. And then you want to have direct call enabled. And as you see right here, if you are actually in a contact and you see the contact, you hold it up to your ear and call it. Or if somebody's calling you, you can just hold your phone up to your ear and it'll go ahead and answer them. It's very, very interesting and definitely works pretty well. And it uses some of the motion sensors to detect the orientation of the device. So we also have the baby crying detector. And I think this one's really, really cool and kind of understated feature. So if we go into the settings, and this one's actually hidden under accessibility, which I don't know why Samsung did this. It's almost like you'll never find it. But under accessibility and then under hearing, you have baby crying detector. And mine's turned on right now. And basically, once you hit play, it's now going to listen to the environment to hear for a baby crying. So if you have headphones in or if you're listening to music, whatever you're doing, it's always going to listen for that baby crying. And if it hears it, it'll pause whatever you're doing and it'll start setting off an alert on your phone. This is very, very, very helpful, especially for any of you parents out there that are listening to music. If you're, I don't know, working out in your house or wherever you're doing, you can always hear for your baby crying. And that's an awesome, awesome feature. I'm just going to go ahead and stop that and turn it off. It does use up some of your battery life because it's actually sending out a constant signal trying to listen for that baby crying. So just keep note of that. Next up, this is another feature in the camera, and this actually pertains to the video camera. So with the S5, if you didn't know, you can actually shoot 4K video. So if we hit settings and go to video size right here, we have a couple different options. There's VGA, HD, Full HD, and now UHD. That stands for Ultra High Def. So you have 3840 by 2160 resolution. That's crazy. The only downside to this, besides from the fact that it gives you perfect crystal clear video, is it's very, very, very shaky. Because of that, the quality doesn't always come out that well if you're shooting handheld. Now, if you can set the phone down or you have a tripod mount for it, you can definitely get some amazing, gorgeous shots out of this device. Next feature we're going to look at is Smart Pause. So this is very similar to Smart Stay in the fact that if you actually are watching a video, so we'll open up the gallery. And when you're watching a video, it'll look at your eyes, and if you look away from the screen, it'll go ahead and pause the video. So, I'm sitting here watching this, and if we turn it away, it'll go ahead and pause. And then when I look back, it'll go ahead and resume playing. Look away, it'll pause. And then the video ended, so it went ahead and shut off. But basically, it's just a very interesting feature. Again, a lot of these are very interesting, but they really are. Um, if you're watching a movie and then somebody asks you a question, if you look away from the screen, it knows to pause. And that, again, it just comes into where the phone's a lot smarter than you think it is, and it really is aware of not only what the phone's doing, but what you're doing as well.
Okay, so next up, this is another feature found in Accessibilities. So go to Settings, and all the way down to Accessibility. And this one's actually right in Vision and Magnification Gesture. So we'll turn this one on. So now, if you triple tap the screen, it'll go ahead and zoom in. And you can use two fingers to drag around, pinch in and out to actually zoom in a little bit more. So if you're in an area or an application that you kind of want to zoom in, but you can't, for example, if we're, I don't know, right here, I can triple tap and we can zoom in and really see whatever we're doing. So we have Hangouts, Drive, Play Movies, and then triple tap the screen again and it'll zoom all the way out for you. It's pretty interesting, again, especially if you are hard on the eyes and you can't necessarily see as well, it'll definitely help you out in the long run. So the next feature we're going to look at is also in the camera, and this is Selective Focus. So similar to the HTC M8, you can actually refocus your shots after they've been taken. So I went ahead and took this sample shot for this pic for this video, and let me just actually go ahead and enable screen rotation. So I took this shot right here, and you see this little icon. This is for Selective Focus. You actually have to take the photo with Selective Focus mode in order for it to work, but let me actually bring this in a little bit closer so you guys can exactly see what I'm doing. So as you see right here, it's focused on the bottle, and that's on near focus. If I click on far focus, it'll go ahead and focus on the background, and the bottle is now out of focus. If I click on pan focus, you'll see that everything is in focus. It's a very interesting feature. It can be a bit gimmicky. What it does is it actually takes a lot of photos so that it can kind of just readjust for itself. It's not actually adjusting one photo. But it can be cool nonetheless and definitely help for you to get a little bit more accurate image or if you're in an environment where you're kind of trying to get the foreground and background in one, it can definitely help you out. So next up we have Smart Switch and this is actually an app in the Play Store. Basically, let me go ahead and see if we can pull this up for you. What this is going to allow you to do, and let me pull this up. This is just going to help you pull over all of your old data from an iPhone or an Android device when you're switching it over to a Samsung Galaxy device. So as you see here, it's a free application. I don't have it installed because this is simply just a device I'm testing out with. But you can bring data over from iCloud. You can bring data over from other Android devices. So contacts, messaging, all of that, photos, videos. You can bring it all over so that you don't have to really start fresh. Next up is multi-window. And if we go into our settings, we can enable this real quick. This is under its own option called multi-window right here. And we'll just hit enable that. So now if you long press on the back key, you'll see that little thing is kind of going in and out. And what we can do is we'll open up the browser, open up files as well, and then we can kind of hide that little panel. So now what this is allowing us to do is have two applications running at one time. We can adjust which application really has dominance by moving this over. And it's just pretty interesting. It's another one of those features that really just helps the phone be a little bit more productive. You can really multitask with this device because of this feature. Next up is Wi-Fi only battery saving mode. So in the past, using the GPS can be a little bit detrimental to the battery life. However, they have actually added this new option. So if we go into location, and mode, we have three different modes, GPS only, power saving, and high accuracy. High accuracy is what we're mostly no used to, and that's using the GPS and your cellular data. However, there's now an option to only use data and Wi-Fi, so it's not actually going to use the GPS chip at all. So when you use this, it's not going to be as accurate, however, you're still going to get a good representation of wherever you are. Next up is easy mode. So we'll go ahead and go into the settings. And I'll go ahead and pull that up. This again is one of its own settings. So we have easy mode right here. Tapping on that and hit done. Actually tap on this, hit easy mode, hit done. And this is really the mode for any new smartphone user. So it's very, very simple. You have some big icons right here. You can go on more apps and it's now a vertical list as opposed to horizontal. If you go home, you have this very easy kind of dumbed down home screen. And then you have a bunch of preset lists for contacts. So you can create contacts or add one in there. Also in the upper left-hand corner, you have your pedometer. And we'll go ahead and jump back home. 
And as you can see, again, it's just very simple. So for like a grandparent or for a new smartphone user, it just makes it so it's a little bit less complicated and very easy to get into. You can disable this by going into Easy Settings. Once you're here, you can click on Easy Mode and make sure that you enable Standard Mode again. Hit Done. And we are back to the normal home screen. Next option we're going to look at is also in the video. If we go into the camera settings and recording mode, we have smooth motion. This is going to be a super fluid, real to life look shot with the video camera. This does step the quality down to 1080p, so you cannot do the smooth motion and 4K at the same time, unfortunately. But this does allow you to have a very nice, crisp looking video and there's not going to be any jitters or shaking. Next up, we have the heart rate monitor, and that's actually a physical piece on the back of the phone right here next to the flash. And we can actually trigger this in S Health. So if we go ahead and open up S Health and click on heart rate. And now it's going to ask me to put my finger on the sensor, and you can see that it's measuring my heart rate. Basically, once that finishes, I'll just click here. You can see an entire list of your heart rate, so you can really get a good look at how you're doing just over time or while you're exercising or whatever you're doing with your heart rate to try to see where you're at. Next up, if you triple tap the power button, you can actually enable this emergency mode. So if we go into the settings, we'll enable this real quick. Under safety assistance, you have this send help messages, and right now it's turned on. That's because I'm actually in an emergency, so let me disable that. So we have send help messages turned on and we'll go ahead and jump into the setting and this is going to send a photo as well as a sound recording. And basically, so what I'm going to do is press this three times. My phone vibrated a little bit. It's now taking a picture with the front and back camera. It's also sending a voice recording to a set number of contacts that I've already chosen. And that contact is actually this phone so we're going to get those right now. Now we get a link that says SOS. It says SOS, there's the two pictures, front camera and back camera. It also sends some coordinates to where they're located. And it sent the voice recording as well. So as you see right here, we can listen to this. So you can hear that. So if there's a snippet, they're screaming out something, whatever, it can definitely help in an emergency scenario. For me, I don't really know if I'm going to remember to press that button, but if you're somebody that could, that could definitely help you and potentially really save you in the long run. Last but not least, we're going to look at ultra power saving mode. So if you jump into your settings and you go down to power saving, you have this option for power saving mode. We'll go ahead and turn this on, and similar to the emergency mode that I showed you before, this puts a phone in grayscale, it also sips battery, and it really restricts some of the applications you can use. So as you can see here, we have phone, messaging, internet, clock, uh, calculator, voice recorder, as well as some detailed information going on with the battery. If we hit messaging, you can see that everything is going to remain in black and white, there's no color at all. I don't believe the camera works in this mode either. Um, again, this is really just meant to conserve your battery life. So if your phone's at like 10%, go ahead, flick this on, and you're going to get a ton more battery life out of your device. And that's really it, guys. That was 50-plus tips and tricks for the brand-new Samsung Galaxy S5. Again, if you want to go see the tips and tricks video we did on the brand-new HTC One, the M8, we have that as well. Check the link in the description below, or if there's an annotation on screen, you can just click on that. Anyways, guys, it's Phil here from TechSmart. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for tons more videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.